I, I just got to start with a little story you might enjoy. I think it was 29 years ago, Denny Green and I were coaching at Stanford University. And uh, we went back to play Boston College, and we absolutely got slaughtered. I mean, slaughtered. I mean, they, I've never seen a team so beat up. We looked like an ambulance getting on the plane. We lost everybody. But we did have one guy standing, John Elway. And we're in there working on a game plan, and Danny calls me and says, hey, Jim, you know how much the most attempted passes in a college football game is? And I said, no, I really don't, but I'll go look it up. He said, well, let's look it up, because we're going to break that record. We happened to be playing Oklahoma the next week, and they were number two in the nation. And we were taking a half a team with us, so we were going to – well, we threw it, threw it like crazy the first half. We beat them, and we just had to hold on to the lead in the second half. But uh, take a team in there like that, we were going to break some records, throwing them, at least attempts, nothing else. Um, was not trying to be repetitive what uh, Michael's talking about, what Denny's talking about. I mean, I, I'm truly excited about this. Um, probably like a lot of people, uh, when I first sat down with uh, Michael and Frank Bruno, I was skeptical. Um, I wasn't sure about this. Um, uh, and after I started meeting with them, I had the same question that everybody else did. In, in these economic times, uh, you know, players, what are you doing here? You know, all this stuff, people buy it. When you really look at it, and after talking to them, and I, I talked to some people that are very knowledgeable, the most important thing to me, and I guess I was the first guy hired, um, when I looked at it, was the structure. Because I was in the World Football League years ago. Probably some of you don't even remember that one. Um, and I saw the USFL, I've dealt with that just for a minute, but it's a self-destruction. Uh, they've got a good plan to start with, and then they veer off. And some of them are not run by people who should be their football mouth. We're in the football business. And when I started talking to them, and I, you know, Bill Hambrick and his crew, the financial guys, you know, they're solid people. They're not fly-by-nights. They got a lot of money, and they got a passion for the game. So what they do? They went out and hired Michael Hugh to run it, a veteran football guy with success built the franchise, Jacksonville, knows the game, knows the business side of it, knows the football side of it. And I thought, well, that's good. Frank Bruno, Larry Epson, we started naming the guys who hired us. Well, you know, it's got some credibility now, all right? And then he started talking about the coaches he wanted to get. All right, but well, you get some veteran coaches that I think have proven themselves. And I got interested. And then we had another meeting, another meeting, we talked. And I just thought, you know, this is how a football league should be run, where your expertise is what you do, and you leave other things to other people. And since I've been here, Michael has been incredibly responsive, really takes the coach's input on football matters, and obviously the financial guys, the business guys on the other thing. And everybody's doing what they're doing. You don't have somebody that's just got a lot of money and he wants to toy in the football business. I don't know if this all makes sense to you. I think it probably does, like any business. Everybody's doing what they're hired, hired to do, and everybody's got a proven background for what we're doing. I don't think you're going to get Denny or Ted or Haslett, myself, or the coaches we've hired to do this unless they feel pretty strong about it. Now all we got to do is put a product on the field. And to me, it's an opportune time. This is a great time that uh, in our economic times, price point of an average ticket is $20. That's affordable to a family. I think 72% of the people in America that call themselves an NFL fan can't go to a game, either because they can't afford it or they don't live in the same city. But they love football. Um, but the overall structure and the way this thing is set up to operate and the financial discipline they have there's no more Arena League. I don't think it's coming back. And the NFL Europe is no longer. And I heard Denny talk about it. I'll argue all night long with anybody that says there isn't some other good professional football players that can play. And they need a chance. And if you don't believe me, call Kurt Warner, two-time MVP of the National Football League, and couldn't get in this league. We're not, I'm not, we're not looking at this. This isn't a minor league. We're our own league. And we're going to have very good players. There's, I mean, I remember David Patton. We got him 
Nobody had given even a look in the NFL. I had a scout call me and said, call Casey, I said, fly the kid in. Got him? Actually, I was forced to cut him, and I said, no way, I'm keeping him. Call him back within two hours. He got three Super Bowl wins. So there are players out there, I'm confident, and we'll get them, and we will develop them, and it will be a fun game to watch. This is not a hocus pocus deal. So I, I'm excited. All right, I'll shut up and answer your questions. Now. How's that? You're probably sitting there saying, well, you shut up, I got questions. Go ahead. Uh, your name is always, it seems like every year, your name is to some team as possible, as coach or whatever. What intrigues you about going to go to the NFL? Well, I mean, I assume everybody heard the question. Um, I'll repeat it. Um, you know, a new venture, first of all. Uh, I love to coach. I mean, if you gave me a choice, and I live in Paradise Valley, I announced Sunday Night Football in the NFL last year. Love doing it. When I wake up in the morning, you say, would you rather go play golf or would you rather put a game plan together? I'd rather put a game plan together. Would you rather work until 11 o'clock at night or go out to dinner with somebody? I'd rather work until 11 at night on football. The, this, the, the games are just incredible. And I've always said, and I learned this kind of from John Elway, when do you quit? John had the same thing. I'll quit when I'm tired of sitting there at 11 o'clock at night because I'll never get tired of coaching games and interacting with young people and trying to develop their skills and see them move on and get better and all those things. So when they approached me, I wasn't going to do it if I thought this was going to be a bad situation. This is going to be a bad deal. And I was convinced of that and I said, I'm excited. I, I swear to God, I'm as excited as I've been to coach in a long time. Yes. Jim, to follow up and, and uh, hope you understand what I'm trying to ask the question, talk about quality product. The football fans, whether they understand the quality product of great players in the field are connected to the NFL's perception is that's great. Worst team in the league is still great. Top level college football, those are what's perceived to be very good players. The thought of saying this is a great product, obviously you and fellow coaches have been doing this a long time. Is there a concern that fans understand that? They may have some recognized names from colleges and NFL teams, but to sell that as a product where they, at the end of the day, still compare what they perceive to be the best of being the NFL or top league college teams. Does that question make sense? Yeah, it, it makes sense. Um, I think, you know, it'll take them a little time because so many times in that it's about name recognition. Now, I, I, let me tell you something. There's a whole bunch of guys in the NFL with great names. If you stayed and watched them, they don't play very good anymore. Okay? And, you know, this league, will, this league will sell itself when a football fan, and they'll, our fans are going to be people that love football. There's going to be some other people just for an interest and want to go to the game. But there will be people that will come out and they'll watch that game and they said that was a heck of a football game. That was a good football game. There's going to be great catches, great plays, quarterbacks, and backs running and breaking for touchdowns. When they see the talent of some of these guys, and, and I think if I'm a fan doing that, um, I'm saying, you know, we had uh, Pete uh, Smith here last year, and right now he may be moved on and he, he, great career, he moved over to the NFL, and, and they'll follow their players. And they'll say, who's the next guy? Who's the next guy? And people will get into it. You ever seen a baseball game, somebody got, they're keeping their own little box scores and stuff? It's amazing. People, when they get into it, and it'll be people that love the game. But you, when you, if you're a true football fan, you will see a good product on the field. Okay? It, it, there's just enough. Every year I cut the last group in the NFL, we would have a staff, we'd talk about it, and say, we're going to see these guys again. They're going to be back in the league. And, you know, it's like, uh, it, it, it broke my heart sometimes to cut those guys. And a lot of them ended up back in the league. And this is going to be a great opportunity for these guys. Yes? I don't mean to put you on the spot. No, yes, you do. You mean to put me on the spot. You wouldn't have said that in preface, huh? Put you on the spot. Does that also apply for the coaching end of it? No, you know, they ask me that. I get asked a lot of times. Are you, are you worried that this will hurt your chances to go back to the NFL? Or do you think it will help your chances? And my answer is very simply, I don't care. I really don't care. First of all, in my life, I have never, swear to God, I've never taken one job thinking I can, this will lead somewhere else. When I was just an assistant in college, I never took that job. I took that job because I like that job. If it happens, it happens. But I, I don't have any, I don't have any feelings. Right now, right now I know this. 
my kids who know me pretty well, they said, Dad, we haven't seen you this happy in a while. You're just having fun. And you know what? This is what we all got into coaching with no expectations of making money or no expectations of having press conferences. And I ended up on the damn biggest stage in New York. If you'd asked me when I started coaching, what do you think? Is your goal to be the head coach of the New York Jets? No. I can't even imagine doing it. But I, I, I love doing this right now, and I'm going to do it as long as I love football.